we, we need to fix that. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Social Media What? Uh, this week, QR Q&A with me as always. And thankfully, because I didn't really have a lot of planning for this week, uh, Mandy is here. So thank you, Mandy, for joining us. Hi. Glad to be here. Shocked, so, shocked at the revelation that I just had before we hit record, but I won't go there now. <laughs> That's why you have to show up early um, uh -huh. to get all of the uh, the good stuff. Anyways, uh, so QR codes, I'm ready to discuss why I think they're cool, why I think they're not dead, because that's usually the first thing that I hear when I mention a QR, QR code to somebody. It's like, oh, those are the things that were around three or four years ago, and they're dead now. They're not a real thing, are they? Um, so we'll try and answer that question. Um, and then whatever ever other questions people have or we have that we'll ask each other or uh, Hedy might have some might have some questions for us also. So we want to keep the conversation going in a direction that's relevant to whatever anybody wants to talk about, hopefully around QR codes. And if it changes too much, we'll stop the recording and get Change the title. From there. Yep. <laughs> like I might do that for Dropbox. I'm, I'm working on Dropbox today. Anyways, no, Dropbox, we're going to focus right now. Sure. All right, so QR codes. Wow, let me just make a lot of noise, and there we go. This is why I'm drinking water right now, because I've already had three cups of coffee. QR oh, wow. codes. That's probably a good idea. Oh, well, too late. <laughs> too late now. You've got a full cup of coffee. I have coffee and water, though, so yes. I'll switch. I'll switch. All right, so the first question that always comes up uh, is, what does QR stand for? Do you know what it stands for? Or do no. I have to Google that? You know, and that's one of the things that is funny because on all these other things, I would um, guess something like query response or I think it's you know quick reference. Quick reference also makes sense. Uh, clearly, by the use of the word query, quick, quick? quick response hey. according to, according to Wikipedia, which we all know is fact. Um, <laughs> quick response. And I have heard that multiple times also that it's quick response. Mm -hmm. The whole idea of a QR code, and you can see one in the picture that we had for the, the Blab today, is the idea is that it's something that you can scan with your phone that takes you someplace on the internet. Um, so in a very basic sense, if you scan that QR code, uh, that was on there, it was a little joke that I found when I did QR humor and it says, what are the fish say when it ran into the wall. And if you see oh. that QR, what did you say? I know it. That's one of my favorite jokes. <laughs> I didn't know it before. And there was another one that, that also give you an example of where it's going is there's another one that was, had the words duck, duck, and then a QR code. So uh -huh. the idea is uh, I'm on Android. So I'll show it on Android. And if you have yours on um, iOS. So right out over here, I have an app that's called... QR Droid, if I can get the glare. And I have QR Reader. Yeah. So anything oh. like that um, uh. will work. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that up. And uh, let's see here. So, for example, I'm going to go to it's this looking right at, here. It's, it's looking for the code that is not it's, existing. I should have printed one out. I probably have one. Well, so here's what I'm going to do. Oh, interesting. That's just a general one. Yeah. Where's one of our uh, ACCT ones? That would have been a good one to have. You know yeah. what? I have access to all those files on my Dropbox. Uh, okay. Which we'll Can you throw one into the uh, Let me uh, in here and I'll yeah. talk about where to get the programs first and then you can get the, the link and we can scan it. So basically sure. all you need to do is if you go to the, if you're on, uh, if you're on Android, go to the play store and then just, uh, Horrible placement for the microphone. Let me know if by moving that I got too quiet. I can turn the mic volume up. So in the Play Store, Google Play, you're going to search for QR. Okay, so Be right back. That's there. All right. Um, and or in iOS, you can just in, in the App Store, again, just search QR Reader, anything like that. Um, what I have been finding over the past year is depending on, um, I'm not going to speak for iOS on this, even though I wish I could because I think it is, but I'll speak for Android platforms, is most Androids are now being shipped with a QR reader as part of the photo program. So like if you take a picture of a QR code just with your photo program, I've seen newer Androids automatically recognize as a QR code and pop it on up 
straight there. But for a third party app, I like QR Droid. And what happens on this is once I see a QR code, so I'm just going to open this up here. Um, okay. Is as Mandy was saying, is it's now just basically opened my camera up and it's looking for something to scan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Once it finds something to scan, and I can't believe I cleaned my desk off. Usually I have like 15 things with QR codes. So I know it's actually a good point to mention our QR codes dead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to see here. Didn't plan this while you're looking for those QR codes. Is I have a magazine here that's photography. What is this? Outdoor photography. And I am curious to see if in here they have put any QR codes for me to scan. Well, thanks for stopping by, Mandy. <laughs> so to answer the question, are they dead? Well, if nobody is putting them up anywhere, then they are going to die out. And the reason that people think they are dead and died out is because people were not using them correctly. Okay, here we go. So here is an example of how to use a QR code. So weird. So I am on a page. This is BNH photo, bnh.com, professional source for photography. Okay. They have taken a full page app out. Okay. And what I'm even going to do is I'm going to get this here because if I can get that in focus, anybody watching the replay, if I can get it right in focus there, I yeah, think. Yeah, I don't think that's going to do it. I think it is. Okay. <laughs> Let's give try. It, give it a try. So what Mandy's going to do with her phone is she's going to scan. Uh -uh. No? No. How about now? Try it one more time. Oh, it wants to. But you know what? The You know how the screens do funky things? Uh-huh. Yep. I think of the lines on the screens um, aren't helping either. But that's okay. Right. I'm going so to print gonna off one right of now. the ACCT things. Okay. All right. So I'm going to block. The screen there. All right. So I'm going to take my QR code scanner and I'm going to scan this. And now here's what I'm hoping why I say they're doing it right is they are telling me that this is to go and download the app. So basically what they've done is rather than saying download our app and here's the website, like I just did there. Okay. So um, where I said, go to Google play, search for QR droid. If I had a QR code set to go right to the play store, and mine is saying, what do you want to do with this QR code? And it's saying one of the options is the Play Store. So now if I go to the Play Store and open this up, it's going to take me directly to their app. So what they've done as to reach me as a consumer is in a print ad, they've put this QR code. They're betting that I as a consumer, as somebody that would be interested in an app, I'm not even sure what their app does. Um, yeah, what does this app do? But now I'm reading about it, right? I don't have to sit here and they don't have to take up all this, this space in the print ad or try and talk to me about this because I just scanned it with my phone. I didn't have to type anything in, scan it, hit where I want it to open. And again, sometimes it's a website, sometimes it's something else. Um, and it's just good to go. So there is an example of how a company can do a QR code correctly. Now, if I scan this and it instantly said, give us your email address and we'll send you some information on getting our app, that in my opinion is using a QR code incorrectly. The first thing you need to do is if you're, you got to make sure that your QR code says what it's going to do. Okay. Now, if it doesn't say anything and I just want to scan it, I'm, I'm hesitant to scan QR codes that don't say anything because knowing that that QR code could literally take me anywhere online. Um, if I see no identifying information, just like a QR code at a bus stop, I'm, I'm less likely to scan that. Oh, come right. on. We're in the adventure industry. Now, okay. <laughs> that is, that is my marketer hat on. Now the other side of this is oh. that, yeah. okay, let's try and scan that. All right. To give it a I, try. I, have to, I have to hold it really, really still, although the, the, that, the screen lines will probably still be an issue. Nope. It's, scan for me. Nice. Now, again, I had it, I had it about holding. two feet away from the screen. I'll keep holding it just in case. Okay. And Anybody now my phone is scan. My phone is opening the deep default application, which is um, Chrome on my phone, whatever it is. 
Okay. And then I get to here now. So this would be an example. Now this is an old QR code that Mandy has. So this would be an example of using QR codes incorrectly, but it's an old one and it worked at the time. <laughs> I can make this, it work again. <laughs> but see, this is an example though of something yeah. that I'm aware of is one of the resources I wanted to share. Um, ah, sorry, I couldn't open for you. One of the resources I wanted to share is that I used to use a great website called scan.me and they had awesome QR code generation programs. It was a business card and I have it on the back of some of my business cards and it would open up on my phone, a really nice landing page that said, follow Ed on Facebook, follow him on Twitter, on Pinterest, on Instagram. Here's his phone number. Here's his mailing address, right? It was a professional looking business card. They finally have about at ACCT. So what about four months ago, I found I couldn't edit my business card anymore. Yeah. Do math three months ago. Um, and now when I logged on today before the blab to share it, they actually said that they no longer are operating. And if you have a previous QR code with them, send them the, the basically the web address of the QR code that I had made with them and send the new redirect and they'll send it to like my website or something like that, which now I need to do because if anybody gets a hold of my business card or the extra ones that I have and they scan, it's going to go to a dead page. True. So that is one of the, 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 the issues if you're using a third party. And again, listening to people talk about Facebook live and some other things this morning is we're renting space when we use other applications for these things. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that whatever we're using stays relevant. All right. So, um, I was going to go into what are some things we can do with QR codes that are cool and then talk about the resources I use to do that. But, uh, do you or Hetty have any specific questions about QR codes? Uh, especially Hetty. So you're not sitting around going, I hope they talk about this at some point and <laughs> we take an hour to get there or we just never get there. Um, let us you know. know is anybody tracking uh, QR code usage with all of this talk of QR codes are dead and, and whatever, all those, is, are there any numbers on it anywhere? Hmm. I don't know. Uh, code usage US 2015. I'm going to just Google that quick. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because there we go. I noticed of course that there are still QR codes popping up on everything. Um, and they don't seem to be going away. And I imagine that most of the larger companies do have uh, ways to track, you know, incoming traffic or of course everybody has ways, but are tracking incoming traffic and how they're landing, uh, where they're landing. And that if QR codes weren't effective, they would quit putting them on their packaging because space is valuable. So those are, that's my instinct there. Okay. I'm going to try and see. I found a, a nice infographic from 2014 at least. Let's see if it loads. Of course not, but you can click on that to, to go to it and check it out. Um, so if you want to click on that, it'll open up a new tab. Okay. And so here are some trends from 2014 of where all the QR codes are being opened. So this is more of if somebody comes across a QR code um, mm -hmm. where are they opening? And you can see the states are big on this map uh, in Australia, um, Illinois. Woohoo, go Illinois. It's kind of easy. <laughs> Illinois. Um, Australia and Illinois, top QR code users worldwide. Yeah. And the UK, it looks like. All right, created versus okay. scanned. Mm. All right. So there's some details in there. And again, one of the things that I noticed walking around in Chicago is. I'm seeing more and more bus stops that have QR codes on them, which I think is a great mm -hmm. place to put them depending on what yeah. your industry is. The other thing, like I said, is this is the, what issue is this? This is March, 2016 of outdoor photographer mm -hmm. and they are there. I equate mm -hmm. to where QR codes right now as to where, um, iPods were in, uh, 2004 <laughs> because, <laughs> In 2004, what I noticed is if I took the train to, and which I was doing for my work at the time is if I ever got on public transportation, I would see at least one person that had the white earbuds in. Mm -hmm. And I think since QR codes, and that's what I equated to the fact that I can randomly pick up a magazine, I can go out and about on my daily travels and see, come across mm -hmm. at least one QR code a day tells me that it still has the heartbeat still there as something that, um, 
hasn't gone away. Yeah. No. So, uh, Hedy, what do you mean by obscure uses? Because I might have some of those or want to use some of those. Uh, and are you available to jump into a seat to have a uh, conversation about it? Feel free. Or chat, either way. We always yeah. like having people on here because then we know we're answering your questions rather than just talking about what we want to talk about. So when you say graffiti artist, do you mean? The graffiti artist was using it or you are the graffiti artist using it? <laughs> well, I just was like, is this a new, it's like graffiti QR code art. Um, I'm like, cool. I'm like, is that accurate? Now I'm going to look up graffiti artist okay. QR codes. Yeah, because actually, if you think about it, you could, because if you create a QR code, mm -hmm. you could, it's so, again, this is where the geek in me wants to know how many points of reference, because if you look at the average oh. QR code, there has to be, oh, that's a cool idea. Yeah. So you're not seeing the chat on this. Um, what Eddie is saying is that the the artist has a qr code and when you scan it it goes to a paypal account that you can do to basically like make a donation to support them that's and and then this person another person is using uh qr codes to preserve graffiti for posterity by photographing the graffiti before it is removed after the graffiti has been cleaned off by local authorities or building owners i place a qr code in the exact location which resolves to an image of the original and that way, a mobile phone with a QR code reader can be used to travel back in time. Very cool. That's throw that, throw that awesome. In. Yeah, that's very cool. Cool. There we go. Nice. Oh, that's a new option. I haven't been on Blab for two weeks. And uh, interesting. I don't think the pinning is working today. <laughs> Because if I hover okay. over that link, it says that I can pin it. But I noticed yeah. that it's not letting me. I noticed this in a blab earlier this morning that questions weren't showing up on the left either. Oh, well. Mm. Yeah. So um, I know in, in my own personal use of QR codes, I tend to use them less um, for those like direct information purposes, like bounce to the website or, or business card and those sorts of things, although I definitely use them for those. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, all the different cool things you can do with them, like the graffiti preservation and, and just making um, like the, the scavenger hunts and different team building related things with, with some of the groups that we do. And um, it's, I think I enjoy QR codes more when I get to use them creatively mm -hmm. than just as a standard, like bounce to um, information. Well, tool. You, you even mentioned that with the QR code that doesn't have anything underneath it is there's that sense of mystery around it. Like, where's mm -hmm. this going? Um, and, you know, with the, the team building stuff we talked about, I, I've shared the QR code for the Zoom activity. That's the picture yeah. activity. Um, I should probably throw that in, in the links here too. I'll get that before we leave. Um, so I, I think that the biggest thing though, is if you are using it for marketing is tell us where you're sending us. Um, but I'm now, I'm, I'm, my brain is going on. How are the different ways? So some of the creative ways that I've seen to use it. Um, and let me grab the Pinterest board up here and throw that link in the uh, comments here. Um, I'm not going to put my whole thing up here. I want to get my um, QR code board right here that in the comments. So there is a pin that I put in there. And one of the things that I really like about this one that I found is that there is a place you can go to. Um, and it's called, I should put the actual pin in here. It's called um, share link generator. And this is a one, two punch. So when you go to share link generator, okay. Um, that's on that pin there. And this will have both links that I'm talking about right now is you can create a Twitter post you can create a Facebook post. You can even, and this is what I've loved as a presenter. You can create a email link mm -hmm. and all of these, basically you type in and you'll see, you know, what do you want your, your Twitter post, tw your tweet to say, what do you want the Facebook to post to say? What would you like the email to say? Who's it to? What's the subject? And you can type all of that in. 
And what I did at the social media, what presentation at ACCT is I created it, um, that email that said, Hey, Ed, can you send me a link to the Prezi used in this presentation? Now, again, I can sit there as a presenter and say, email me if you want the presentation. And then, they, then I can put my email address up on the board and people have to write that down and then they have to compose the email. Then they have to remember what I said they had to do. And they have to remember to do this probably after they've left the presentation. You're assuming that there are much more patient people in your presentation than me, because I'm typically going to go like this and, boop, and please that's, send. Yeah. yeah. And that's, the, that's the other thing too, <laughs> is that I have no problem if somebody's going to compose that email in the middle, but if I do want them staying engaged and focused on what I'm talking about, the QR code is something they can just, like you said, it, it's even less, mm -hmm. they can scan it and go. So with that first site, you can compose all those things. Then with the second mm -hmm. site in that pin, which I think that I sent people to qrstuff.com. That's the one that mm -hmm. I'm using right now. There are, are a lot of them out there. Is that yeah. when you go to qrstuff.com, like that you copy the URL that you created at the first site into um, qrstuff.com, uh, and then it okay. generates the QR code that I then just put in my presentation or I put on a, a business card or whatever it is, and it's an, an email that just gets straight sent. And then I get it, I have it, and the, the, the person that's interested in whatever I told them to email me about is happy, they're happy, and it, I think that it, it – you know, is a nice one to punch with that. Uh huh. I like um, the the ability to generate those automatic social media posts for people attending events too, mm -hmm. like how we did at ACCT. That's like super super nifty there, just to be able to scan and say, "I'm here doing this amazing thing. You should be here too." Um, that. Oh, go ahead. I heard no, the intake. <laughs> To, let's talk specifically for just a second about, you know, our core audience, which is the um, Zipline Canopy Tour Challenge Course Industry. And yeah. again, I'm uh, not so much if you have a no screen policy at your camp or whatever, but if you're on the recreational side, you want people taking pictures and sharing this stuff. So if you have a queue, if you've got a three, you know, third stop on the canopy tour, there's a QR code there that if they scan, it's going to make an, it's going to open up Twitter. It's going to have a tweet composed. And on top of that, on top of that, it like was a magic trick. <laughs> I just felt like that. <laughs> it's, on top of it, <laughs> um, you, you then, they have the option because it does open Twitter on their app where they can then add the photo or they can add whatever it is you have now composed that tweet with your hashtag, with the at sign for, for your company in there. Mm -hmm. And you basically have um, curated the perfect tweet for somebody else to do to advertise your course. Mm -hmm. Stepping away from that specific industry, if I read a store, putting those up around the, um, the store of like in a section Right. And this is and this is my, my my first exposure to QR codes. And this is why I hated them when they started. And my first reaction three years ago was, aren't they dead? Is I was at Home Depot. Mandy's heard the story before. Sorry. At Home <laughs> Depot, And they had a um, display of bulbs and they had a QR code. And this is back when and it's in the drawer. I'm not going to pull it out. I just had my Blackberry. So I'm at Home Depot. They had free Wi-Fi there. Granted, it was, you know, dial up speed practically on a public, uh -huh. you know, access point like that. I spent a half an hour in this process of downloading the app um, because it said underneath it, go to Microsoft.com to, um, you know, download this app. So I went through that, I had to go through and figure out how to load. So I finally loaded this program um, on my BlackBerry. I finally scanned it. And I'm sitting here and it said to learn more about this plant, scan here. Well, what did they send me to? The HomeDepot.com. <laughs> so after 30 minutes of taking all this time to try and figure out how to make this work on my phone, this company sent me to the Home Depot's website, which I could have very rudimentally typed in the home depot.com on my know, blackberry that's a, that's a long url 29 minutes ago uh, right i so know i would totally point, be expecting 
a picture of the plants. Well, is know, it a the, la the Latin name. Yes. Uh, you know, exactly. All the of range. that stuff that would help me learn about the plant. <laughs> so then as I'm walking around Home Depot, any other QR code I happen to find, it was like, no, 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 you're not fooling me again. You didn't scan any of them to see if they no, all were Home I Depot? I was so frustrated. I, I just took like a half hour. I'm sure I had someplace better to be than the Home Depot. That did, like I had to get what I needed, and I had completely blown that off because it was technology to play with. Yeah, well, there's that. Yeah. But <laughs> no, I, I probably would have. This is this is me, consumer in Home Depot. I probably would have scanned at least two more QR codes to see if um, they took me to you know just the Home Depot website again. And if they did, then I would have been in that place of well, why in the heck even bother making all of these signs? Because they're useless. And I probably would have told them that. Um, <laughs> you know what you it reminds me of, though? It huh. reminds me right now of the discussions going around for business for Snapchat. Mm. Just because yeah, you can yeah, yeah. doesn't, doesn't mean, mean you, mean should. you should. Yeah. But the other reason I wanted to bring Snapchat into the conversation is if you look at Snapchat's how do you follow somebody well, all of your profile pictures are basically a QR code. When you scan somebody's profile picture on Snapchat, that is how you follow them. And that's why when you go on Twitter, more on Twitter, I'm seeing it, not so much on Facebook, but people are changing their profile pictures on different social medias to be their Snapchat profile pic because mm -hmm. they want more followers. They want more you know, people on the social side of it. So again, another check mark tick mark in the column of our qr codes dead because most people don't even realize that's a qr code but mm -hmm. when they take a step back and they think of how convenient that is where i don't have to search for you and i've seen mm -hmm. people on blab all the time going hey here here i am on snapchat right and we're doing this kind of thing and <laughs> and we're following each other that is basically uh -huh. qr code and a use for qr code even though nobody mm -hmm. is calling it a qr code yeah all right, I'm pausing the recording just for one second because I'm having a squirrel moment. Doing a shout out here. Ah? Uh? I, I turned oh, the recording back on. <laughs> oh, okay. So I was going to say that, uh, or I did say that if my friend Mike Bingley from Canada was here, he would know this book because he was with me when we both saw it at the AEE conference silent auction in some year or another. Um, and the name of this book is. Stickman's really bad day. Oh man, and it is awesome. I don't know if there are any QR codes in it, I, but um, be impressive if there were. Okay, like it's, this. It just it starts with him. He's in bed. Oh my lord! He takes That's showers. Awesome. He eats, and it goes on and on. And I won't read the whole book, although you should at some point. But like, you know, he's being chased by a paraglider. These are all signs. Um, I gotta pause again for a second here because I don't want this. Is there any? You gotta be here live, folks, to hear is to there, see all the is stick man anything, and, and see all the really. Cool and risk stuff. of entanglement and things like that. Is there anything else yeah. before we, no. we get going? No. That no. okay. Tiffany lamp and all that. We'll talk about that on another blast. Okay. Cool. All right. So before we took off, so the I was we were talking about using um, them incorrectly. Yeah. So again. I, I more creative ways to do it. So I guess where the creativity starts from is where could you send somebody online? Where is a marketer, if we're going down that route, would we want to send people and mm -hmm. why? And basically, if you can do that, that would be QR. And now the new one that I thought of today with that, the, the fish one, if you scanned it, um, you know, says, what did the fish say when it hit the wall? Scan the QR code. When it comes up on my QR scanner, it just says, damn. Uh -huh. I mean, it just has that text. So you can even do it as a, just a message to your clientele. I need to what happened? You need to take a call. Good. Uh, refresh while you're gone because I was getting echo or not. All right. I'll kick her out. No, just do a refresh. That's fine. So those are some of the things that that I have seen with it. That um, and I'm going to pop back over here to this 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 Pinterest board here. Uh, give me one second because I want to load one of the infographics here. Okay. Oh, and this actually has some of the things that Mandy was talking about. I'm going to try really hard to put this up on the screen with us. 
paste and go. Please load. And I'm going to put it over here. I'm going to paste it in there. Look at that. Great. Now it just starts off. So you can kind of see it. So this is this is some kind of facts. And again, this is getting a little bit older. So if you click through this, it didn't put the whole thing on, but feel free to click through and look at it while we're talking about it. Okay. Um, so, wow, going back to 1994. And the stories that I was talking about were probably in, so I got to go back three phones. So that's at least six, seven years ago. So yeah, in about 2010, 2009 is when I was at Home Depot trying to do those scans. Okay. Um, so again, just a few more, few more resources with it. So um, thank you. Excellent. So uh, I'm going to pause for just a second. Just, uh, oh, and Gina. Hey, Gina. Um, Gina joined. Oh my oh. gosh, everyone's showing up. <laughs> You know, I'll maybe I should miss take time to one o'clock because it seems about at about 10 after one, we get an influx of people. <laughs> I heard mentioning I gardening. Know. <laughs> Eddie, ah, Eddie, ah, there was gardening is, talk. Is, uh, there, was, there was like two gardening talk. There was pre-blab yeah. gardening talk. I think it was pre-blab about the corpse flower. And then there was gardening Home Depot QR yeah. codes potentially. Yeah. So again, any questions that you guys have specifically to uh, gardening or if um, not gardening to QR codes, um, <laughs> I know like Gina and, and Hetty just kind of communicate with each other. You guys want to probably want to follow each other. Uh, doing a home demos of vaporizers. It's what the healthy Hetty lifestyle that co does. Cool. Yeah. And actually put the, ah. put the website in here so we can all check out your website. So put it in as the full uh, URL there so we can click on that. Um, cause again, that's the whole point of lab is being social and creating connections and, um, learning about each other here. So make sure we get that too. Um, so, well, okay. So part, okay. So home demos for, for vaporizers. Um, yep. QR coded also. That's, that's one of the things that I was just thinking is that if you have on, um, documentation, like if you have videos oh, yeah, that you want YouTube people site. to see, that would be great because even if, um, let's see, if you're doing home demos, even if somebody doesn't have a whole lot of time, uh, but you want to show them something um, that you might normally do a demo on, um, you can have that video posted and say, you know, I appreciate that you don't have time right now. Here's a QR code. You can watch the video of what, what this looks like. And, bam, and again, done. that goes, some people immediately say, well, why don't I just like tell people the YouTube you know, to go to YouTube with it and you can, but at the same time, we're back then to having, hang on, I've got to open up my YouTube app right now. Let me search like my, uh, my brother's band is called Odie Joe. And I was trying to find them on YouTube the other day. And unfortunately, Odie Joe is a very common name for YouTube users. Yes, really? really. There were like seven or eight and they all seem to have the same name. But what they have done for their own marketing, and this goes back to other things that we've talked about, is they market themselves on every platform as we are Odie Joe. So they're we are Odie Joe.com. Uh, nice. We are Odie Joe on Good. Twitter. We are Odie Joe on Facebook. We are Odie Joe mm -hmm. on YouTube. But still, for me to then try and, and we're having this conversation, he's like, no, search we are Odie Joe, but no, it's supposed to be no spaces. And it took a good three or four minutes for me to get to the video he was trying to show me versus a QR code. And you can even have it. Some of the QR code. Wow, I lost my phone. That was very impressive on my part. Well, it's buzzing. So it's that's, a, my that's OK. Somewhere. While you look for your phone, yeah. I was well, just thinking that, you know, we're so spoiled now because it took you a whole three or four minutes to access this random video from the from the sky and the Internet. We're like and I'm like. like I get that totally. I was just, I, all, I was just, all. I was just reflecting that you know if this would be X amount of years ago, we would need to go to a friend's house and sit down and pop in the VHS tape or, or no, no, go before that. Uh, we'd have to rush home after school to MV50 in Chicago. Well, we didn't have MTV <laughs> and cable, and you'd have to sit there for the hour and hope the video would be on. Yeah. yeah. But I think, yeah. Grumpy man right Any, anybody remember waiting for the song to come on and making the mixtapes? Yes, but, uh, having yeah. that record pause. Yeah. Moving on, moving on. Yeah, moving but on. Yes. no, this is relevant though because yes. I know we, it's are, relevant, we are so. <laughs> <it wasn't. laughs> that's fine. 
We are so um, so just driven by instant gratification, and we expect everything to work the first time, every time. I mean, think about it when when you join a wireless network and it's you, it's showing you as connected, but you're not able to actually go anywhere. And just how we take so much of this for granted now. Um, that's this is now in our the nature of who we are is we yes. expect this stuff to be instantly accessible. <clears throat> and QR codes are currently the fastest, most efficient way to be able to get people wherever. Um, and so I think it all it all flows in together. Yay, Hetty's calling it. Yep. All awesome. Right. Hello. I don't know if this has a mic here. Is this my mic or is I my mic? That's, my mic that's probably your mic. <laughs> I've never had a mic that you could push a button. Yeah, yeah, that's your mic because you're uh -huh. coming in and out when you push the button. <laughs> my, my mic can, it's a mute then. So yep. it's muted. You can't hear me now. I can no, hear you. No, we can hear you now. Can you still hear me? Yeah. If you hold the button down, oh. I think it's a mute. Awesome. Yep, can't hear yep, you. Yeah, th there's the muting. <laughs> Hey, Alma. Uh, so, hi, Alma. All right. Whoops. Uh, now it actually is muted. We can't hear you. Maybe it was hold the button down for a while. <laughs> we can't hear you, Hetty. <laughs> no, can't hear you at all now. <laughs> oh, no. The experiment has gone awry. <laughs> we should have left our fingers off the button. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is hilarious. All right. Hey, what were you saying? There, you're back. This? You're back. What you're were back. you saying about this being a professional um, recording app uh -huh. earlier? Yeah, <laughs> it still is. It still is. That's what I'm saying. I'm uh, sticking to it. See, this. So. I have a QR code, but I think this one's way too small. I scanned oh, it with my phone. Yeah, and see? it worked. I'm gonna give it but... a try here. Yeah, that's see, those are good. the. Key. QR That's codes. probably not going to be in focus so, enough for me. Yeah, it does yeah. work on a business card, but not over. So you need something yep. a little larger. Right oh, that one's good. Let's scan yep. that. Scan for me. Hold on. Let's Keep holding. Andy. Keep holding. Yeah. Let's see where we're going here. Nice. Healthy 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 Healthy. Your QR code works. Congratulations. Like you said. So, like you said, it's down, but it does work. That's yeah. the the difference in size. It it will work on a business card because that's like the business oh, yeah, card setup. Sure. Yeah, I love it on the back side of the business card. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it absolutely will. So, so what ideas have you gotten to use the QR codes for in all of our rambling so far? This <laughs> you've talked about a while. I'm, I'm sort of new to it. That was one that was made up by the Healthy Heady Lifestyle uh, Company, basically the Mary K of Mary J. And, uh... <laughs> Are you in Kent, Washington? No. Oh, darn. I, I just I saw Ken. Mass, Massachusetts. Oh, okay. Oh. I did not look. All right. Oh, it's the Blab map gone now. We don't know where anybody is anymore. Yeah, and, <laughs> you know, we start talking marijuana. You know, I naturally think of Washington, so <laughs> it is uh, what it is. <laughs> yeah. Ah, cool. So the, I guess the one thing I, at least I'm not familiar with Bitcoin at all, really, I've never – exchange bitcoins or use bitcoins for anything but basically when you make a bitcoin transaction that bitcoin qr code gets sent to that person you're giving the the, the bitcoins to also huh. so that qr code stays with the transaction or does the qr code basically disappear after the transaction i've got yeah. no experience of Me either my yeah. experience is they want to go play with Bitcoin now. Yeah. Yeah. My experience is seeing everybody want is blabbing on it usually after 11 o'clock at night. And uh, one of these days, I'm going to jump on one of those blabs <laughs> and see what it's all about. So that's the only question I really had. I'm not too familiar with it all. I know, you know, the basically the it's like a static, you know, image that will always be for that particular address. Like, I, I couldn't go in and change that QR code that I just showed you to, to some other address. Yeah. It, it, well, and it depends if you own it or not, right? If you like some of those resources I was putting on, you can go in and take an old, if you sign up for one of the accounts, 
like the ones that I was talking about that you can have like on a business card or something like that, you can then go in, have your catalog on that site of QR codes and go in and say, I want this to go here now instead. Hey, Haley. Um, Hi, you know, Haley. And you can control that but you usually need to sign up for an account. And I tried to put some of those up there that, that are, are the free ones. Um, but again, just like we've talked with every other social media platform is scan me. I used for three years. I loved it. It was so professional looking. And then one day when I went to use it, it, it just is gone. So you have to be careful with it. Yeah. Um, but now who was it? I'm going to look over here. If it was Haley or um, I see it's the same. I use the same one as uh, Mandy, I believe. The yeah, the it's called QR, QR code, code yeah. something, whatever. Yeah, QR code reader. There's so many. Like you say, you gotta find one that you're comfortable right. with. I guess. What I'm looking for is somebody nice. um, mentioned. I'm um, reading uh, Alma's. Oh, Alma. uh, it was Alma. description. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Because Alma, that's yeah, really that's, that's what I was just looking for. Alma, oh, sure you know, design. you know what? Um, I don't know if you've used it this way um, to Alma, but another thing is if you um, if you want to identify other locations within um, your your range of wherever you're kayaking to, what I use uh, QR codes for a lot of times is I'll go into Google Maps and I'll create a custom map with pins and information that people might need for whatever reason and just do the QR code up so they scan it and they automatically have this custom Google Map available to them which is a really nice thing. Cool. Uh, yeah. So and that's and I think that's a big part of it is just finding different ways that we can just be creative with it and a lot of it is is starting with, again, knowing that the QR code is going to take you anywhere digitally online. Mm -hmm. So if you can think of a way of something that you would love for your customers or whoever you're interacting with, of something that they can do. And, you know, another, we were talking about Snapchat earlier. And I think this is where QR codes are going to, to come back into things is people are going to start using them and we're going to quit calling them QR codes. And we're just going to be using them. When I was at Disney last week, when we get our photo taken, they hand me a press pass, a little photo pass. And in the app, it says you click on the photo pass and it says, do you have a card? Click here to scan. And it's a QR code on the back of that card they gave me. But nobody's calling it a QR code. And we're moving on with our lives, not realizing that we're starting to use QR codes more and more. Mm -hmm. And we're not even realizing it as the consumer. Well, what about UPCs? Right. Yeah, I mean, I got, well, yeah, so I'm not sure where to go with that because where I use UPC is I have two apps that have those scanners built in. One is a diet, like a, a diet type app, like to uh -huh. count calories, and it has a scanner on it where I can scan the bag of food I'm eating, and it'll take the calorie count and everything else with it. So is that the same thing, or is that completely different? Oh, I mean, well, I mean, the, the coding is different. The, oh, I see what you're saying. Also, but I'm, I'm talking right. about, look at how integrated UPCs yeah. have, have got into our life. Right. Oh, look at that. What? It identified my book. When you did the QR co code scanner? No, my, this scanner does everything. Oh, iOS. Yeah. That's the <laughs> app. Just got to pick the right app. Um, oh, it has prices. It, oh, yeah, this is awesome. Good job. But look at how look at how these are everywhere. I think I might right. have one. On, no, I don't have one on the bottom of my cup. And we don't even think about that now. We would think it would just be freakish if something didn't have the UPC on it, right? Right. Like when you go someplace and it's a little store and they have well, the old sticker price tags and they have to key in everything. You know, that's. That's well, not so common. It, it's not just that. It's like with my father-in-law, we have a um, engine treatment and we wanted to try and get it on the shelves of stores and stores would not take it without a UPC yeah. symbol. So Absolutely. again, I, I, it, it, I, I, it's almost like the UPC is the, the uh, like uncle or grandfather of, <laughs> of QR codes. I mean, it's the I same. I was going to say concept. big brother. Big brother. Okay. Yeah. 
Just um, because I can see more coming out of this sort of thing, especially as um, as we go, as we move into different types of, of coding and technology that aren't just binary, mm -hmm. you know, um, I could see us doing all sorts of different cool stuff. So I want to follow back a couple tangents really quickly, make sure we put a nice bow on those. Tangents. And then, uh, yeah, did we tangent? Yeah, no. Okay. Never. Um, one of which is, I don't know if I ever finished the story with my brother's band with that. And we were, this was off of like, and if you're going to do the product and you have a video. Speaking of bands. <laughs> somebody sorry. needs to screen capture that. <laughs> um, sorry. But the idea being that we never finished that, that just that concept of that. If you have a video about your product, a QR code is a great way of doing that. And this was another thing that I kept on trying to bring up and I tangented myself off of it is like, even for, if you look at the QR code, that was the image for today's blab, right? Um, that QR code took you to a bit.ly that brought you over here. Mm -hmm. Why did I use a bit.ly in between is because that way I can ca capture how many people have scanned um, that code to bring them here. And because bit.ly mm -hmm. has analytics, and sorry, jumping the gun here, bit.ly is that thing that we've talked about before. Um, to be able to shorten websites down to a quick code um, that's easier to remember. Like today's code for the blab was bit.ly slash smw09qr, all caps. It's easier than me remembering blab.am slash ed dash capital slash social dash media dash what dash QR codes dash Q dash A dash and dash resources. So to me, <laughs> and if I really wanted to get fancy, I could have created a separate bit.ly for that QR code because you can make more than one bit.ly going to the same place. And then I could really know how many people are scanning this. So when we talk about analytics in the long run, I know we're now moving into social media. What the heck are you talking about, Ed? But when we talk about analytics with social media and what's the return on investment and who's actually scanning mm -hmm. these, that would be a way for me to be able to collect that information. Of mm -hmm. I know that, you know, if again, if, if the only place to see this QR code is at a bus stop, and we're going back to bus stop again, uh, oh, which is no, which is whatever. good because I know I had bus stop in my head too because you could totally track uh, what demographics and in, in what areas are actually interacting with your Q QR codes um, right. at the bus stops, and you say, oh, you know what, Southside hates QR codes. Well, we're not going to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Southside get There's you. so many different places I was going to go with that, but I'm not. <laughs> um, so anyways, so that that to me is, is another way of utilizing QR codes with things that we may already be doing as marketers mm -hmm. for that one-two punch. Absolutely. So, all right. I, I have to be a little mindful of time today, but I still, I've got a few more minutes here. Any, any other specific questions or thoughts that we want to try and cover before we wrap it up today? And again, just because I have to leave doesn't mean you guys have to leave. You guys can keep on blabbing after I take off. Well, one of the things that I like to remind people is um, because we think, oh, you know, there's this stuff outline uh, or, you know, out there online and we could link to it and it would be good and we could put it here and put it there. But don't ever forget to get creative. You know, you can create your content just like the damn thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just like that damn thing. Uh, you can create your content to make interacting with your brand and your QR codes a lot more fun. Um, you can you can have contests. Again, you can if you want to do um, social media posts with contests and hashtags and different things like that. You can have that all set up on uh, with those QR codes already preloaded with that stuff. Um, I, it's something that's um, <laughs> an event or you know very specific in time uh, to be able to create web content that people can interact with specifically about that to make games and, and different things that people can do. Um, just there's so there's so much potential with them. Just don't forget that you can make it whatever it is and, and then you can be so much fun. You don't have to just rely on what's already static out there. What we didn't talk about is there are resources out there and I'm going to throw this in the um, 
is qrstuff.com, I believe is one of them that does it, is if you look quickly at the site, one of the places that it starts with is if you're making a twi- like follow us on Twitter, mm-hmm. they already have the standard image that the QR code looks like Twitter. Yes. And I have seen other ones out there where you can upload your own image. I know mm-hmm. I did one for ESI at a conference where I took the ESI logo and I put that as the center of the QR code. Mm-hmm. And then you can do your own branding within a QR code. So that way, if somebody doesn't know what the heck a QR code is, you still have your branding on something. Mm -hmm. Um, And also, again, I've seen people be creative. When I was looking for QR humor, Googled that earlier. I saw somebody did a Homer Simpson's QR code, you know, and again, back to who I am as an individual, I'm intrigued. Where's Homer's QR going to take me to? (laughs) Well, I say it's taking you to Moe's. It's taking you to Moe's. Yeah. (laughs) That'd be awesome. Uh, Let's see. Uh, How would they know it's scannable? Um, I think people that, to answer Alma's question, um, how would they know it's scannable? People who are active QR code users are going to recognize that pattern that Mm -hmm. the majority of that code still has within it. Because when you you insert the image, it's still just the center usually of that square. Um, You can do, um, especially with Facebook and Twitter, like where the whole image is that Facebook logo or that whole image is is the Twitter icon or whatever. But within there, it's still very visibly um, differentiated and you can look at it and see that it's a QR code. and you know, again, and- going back to this, you sometimes having directions. Mm-hmm. For this one, I would yeah. say you need to know what a QR code is to fully. It says download, you know, the the app here. And again, if I don't know what a QR code is, the only thing I might add to it is scan to um, scan to download the app. But again, if you think that people aren't familiar, you're going to want to. Um, you're going to want to uh, have those instructions. So I do need to uh, get going because one of the things is I share the office space and Gina is getting ready for her blab. Um, so I want to make sure that we're not blabbing over each other because you guys are going to both hear both of us. So um, what are you blabbing on today? Gina? So I can tell everybody to go check you out. What is your garden? What are your garden <laughs> saying to you? Colors and meanings and stuff. So if you nice. when you're done here, you can go over and check that one out. Uh, I'll get her to send me the uh, the. Um, but if drop you follow her when she was here, yeah, I'll drop the link in a minute here. <laughs> so that's about all I have, and I do like it. I need to get going too and do some other stuff before she starts blabbing. But um, again, I think that what I'm seeing is I'm going to push the blab a little bit later, maybe next week to one one thirty. It because seems that way. More and more yeah. people popping in around that one fifteen central time mm-hmm. area. So I think we'll do that. And next week is going to be uh, Niles asked for us to do social media 011 instead of 101. Um, so I think what we're going to do is go back to the basics and talk about um, you're thinking about putting social, being on social media for your business. What should you be considering? How many platforms? What are the different platforms do? Um, that like way back kind of view because we can yeah. I like getting into the specifics like with QR codes, but sometimes we need to take that step back for everybody and say, do you need to be on Facebook? Why on Facebook over Instagram over Pinterest? What is what are our choices and why? How so much time do, next do you need to How dedicate to to each platform? Because if you want <laughs> to yeah. if you want to do Snapchat well, holy moly, that's way more time than Facebook. Right. right. Well, and even so, people think like yeah, I'll do Facebook an hour a week and I will be fine. It's like you can't. It now again, depending on what you want it to be. If you just mm-hmm. want Facebook to be a landing page out there for somebody to find when your business hours are, set the page up, walk away, and you're done. Mm-hmm. But if you want it to be something that's going to drive business to your message and hopefully to sales at some point, um, you've got to invest in that. And so we'll talk a little bit about what that timing looks like, also. Yeah. So nope, that's a good one. I think what right. uh, we need so. to we need to have a list of the of the platforms we're going to cover, and yes. we need to keep time. We need to, okay. yeah. I, I think I think that's what we need to be able to to do that efficiently. We may have to do part one and two, but a list ahead of time will tell us what that is. So maybe next week we will start with we'll start with the key three again: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, and. Uh, 
And the only reason I'd want to get Twitter in at the beginning because uh, people you know that are here. I, are, chal I challenge us. I challenge okay. us to, to do, what? do More? five minutes on as many platforms as we can within the hour. Five minutes each platform. I'm sorry. You're breaking up. I got to go. See you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. If you All want, right. if you want O one one, then it's, it's this much information. And I think if we stick to the five minutes and we and we stick to did we get all the basic information in there for each platform um, that people need to know, we're going to be able to get out. All right. Here's the what we're going to do. Type is, of content that should be a one one and a whole bunch of it. OK, let me do the wrap up. We'll do a quick 30 second chat on this. And then I got to go. Oh, man, I should have brought my REI beer sign in. Anyways, e so e -R-I e -R -I. pint glass. Pint glass, not beer. No, Stein. I meant my REI Pint Stein. <laughs> but, All right, anyways. But also RopeWorks is on there too. Hi, yes, RopeWorks, but ERI. Ah. <laughs> so thank you, Hetty, for joining us. Thank, thank you. you for everybody for that was part of it. The questions are always great as, as much as possible. Um, join us on our Facebook group. Email me directly at experientialed uh, at gmail.com. I'll put that in the thing and I'll get you in our Facebook group where we have the discussion we're going to about to have offline now to talk about what we do each week here and keep on as a resource. So thank you everybody for being here. I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording and we will see you guys next week. See ya.